and uh, I was embarrassed uh, that I didn't know that you had such trouble uh, diving above about 150 meters. Um, can you explain um, what what the issue is with doing shallower dives? It, it's an overheating issue. It overheats. Okay. Well, for the record, we didn't know either okay. um, <laughs> until we got on this cruise. So those were all specs that the pilots and other engineers told us. So. Uh, I think we can, can. Are you guys available to answer a question? So this is this is or Mike. Mike. I'll, I'll okay. take that one. Okay. Uh, so the issue is with shallower dives. We have two because we have you know well over six thousand meters of cable on on the drum. Um, with shallower dives, there's so much cable on the winch drum and so much electricity yeah, flowing through that cable, the cable itself actually starts to heat up and then it heats up the surrounding cable around it and the winch drum itself. And it just leads to it's faster deterioration there, of the electronics, particularly the fiber within the cable right, itself, the which is why we limited ourselves to 250 meters. That's really interesting, and we were trying to speculate. Somebody thought maybe um, the thrusters, to cool the thrusters, you had to have, uh, you know, the, the deeper water. Oh, I see the bathynomius. Can you guys tell me <laughs> oh, what we're looking at here? It yeah. is eating a fish head. <laughs> yeah, it's a fish head. Yeah, I think That's it's a fish head. Awesome. This is a oh, giant, yeah. cool, yeah. giant isopod. It's a like I like to describe it as a giant undersea cockroach. Yes, that's pretty Come much on. what it is. So uh, I don't know if you guys um, have a we have them in Florida, right? The little pill bugs. Yep. That you, they're yeah, like yeah. In the, the roly poly. The roly poly bugs in the dirt. You used okay. to play with those kids. In. This is a relative of that. It's just a giant version. Can you throw the oh lasers on and see how big he God, is? God, you can eat, you can see ah! him eating. Oh my God, how cool! <laughs> Look at his under stuff. You can see a swimmerette. <laughs> Imagine waking up to this. Like <laughs> no. <laughs> The roaches in is, Florida are scary enough. <laughs> he's, he's swimming just, away. He doesn't he's, want he's to take his, his food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can see his legs. Uh, oh so he God. was probably he was about ten centimeters wide. So he's probably about twenty centimeters long. That give you an idea how big he is. Um, they get really they get big, huge. Yeah. They can be up to like what a foot, a I foot and so. a half yeah, long. They get huge. They make plushies of them. Yes, they do. They're super cute. I'm just <laughs> saying that would be a great Christmas gift. <laughs> so he's got a, like a big piece of fish. Do you have any idea how old an animal, uh, about 20 centimeters long, how old that isopod might be? I do not. Um, I think maybe Chuck Messing would be the one to ask about that. Yeah. Okay, but I have no yeah. clue. Wow. Oh, oh! I think he ran into the ROV. Oops. Um, they have existed for more than 160 I'll million years, though. I can tell you that. Wow! So all the way <laughs> back. Okay. Oop. I don't know. I don't know if went. anyone's so ever eaten. That's the most, that's the most the excitement uh, that we've seen. Today. <laughs> <laughs> it does, we, we've got a bunch of open mouths in, in uh, <laughs> astonishment. We were astonished too. So that was pretty cool. It kind of curved on us. <laughs> Good job, Jack. Wow, cool find, guys. Thanks. Yeah, the sand has a tendency to be a little bit barren, more on the barren side. Sometimes we find some cool um, soft bottom animal. I mean, soft bottom, yeah, critters like Bathynomus. They have a tendency to be on the soft bottom. Um, but really, it's the hard bottom that has most of the most See of the fauna. Biology, yeah. 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 So we'll we'll get to the hard bottom soon. We're about halfway through this sand patch. We're making our way over there. Very good. Another uh, question from the class is, um, how, how long do the expeditions uh, usually run? So this one is, we're 21 days or 22 days? 22 days. 22 days. I have a couple days before we fly out. Uh, I flew out. Um, so we left out of Miami, and I live in, I live in California, but I work remotely um, at Harbor Branch. So th thank goodness for John and my <laughs> lovely boss who lets me do that. Um, uh, so I flew out on the 29th and showed up at the boat on the 29th, and then we left port the 31st, and we get back into port the 20th, see what that and is. then I leave the 22nd back for California. So, oh, here's one of those uh, swimming, swimming, um, uh, yep, uh, headless chicken fish. Um, 
and hit me asties. So this is from the, ex- the expeditions, um, as Stephanie detailed there, are usually between 21 to 25 days at sea for an ROV expedition. That's that's about our range. With 49 people on board, uh, the ship's endurance is limited by uh, food and uh, food stuff supplies. Uh, so that's really as far as we can make it. You know, we're, we're capable of making our own water, and we, of course, have marine uh, sewage discharge a treatment plan on, on, on the ship. Uh, so we're limited by food, and that's pretty much our, our max endurance. Um, mapping cruises can be um, a little bit typ- uh, typically a little bit shorter, a little bit longer, uh, since we have a, a few less folks on, on the ship. And then uh, recently we've also been doing some technology um, some emerging technology and technology demonstration cruises, and those have uh, typically been a little bit shorter, anywhere between 8 to about 16 days. Typical RV cruise, though, is about anywhere between 21 and 25 days. Thanks, Mike. going to stay with him for a minute. This is a swimming so, sea cucumber. What, what I, we mentioned that what we're seeing in the view is a sea cucumber. Correct. People were shocked because we tend not to see them uh, in the water column. Yeah, like yeah. Can you tell us what it is we're looking at? This is called a nipniastes, and it's a type of deep sea sea cucumber. A swimming uh, one. Is, yep, he's sometimes on the ground, sometimes hanging out in the water column. You can see that tube in the middle is his intestines, his digestive yeah, system. Complete. They have a tent. They He's eat. Uh, right they consume sand, yep. and then um, get their, their nutrients microbes. Yeah, out of the microbes. And so that's really just sand um, it going through his intestine. And he just poops all yep. the sand yeah. left over out. Poop the sand out. So he's just basically a swimming intestine, I guess. <laughs> that's what we're looking at, and on the back side, you were seeing the little like flowerets on on. Okay, yeah, that's his mouth go. parts. So he'll put those on the ground. They're really cool. You put right. them on the ground and pick up all the sand okay, and the bits and eat the go. eat them. But right now he's swimming away. And uh, his the the joke name they have for him is a headless chicken fish because it looks like a swimming headless chicken. Oh, is that another wreck fish down there? I don't know what that is. Uh, Rock maybe. Oh, it could oh. be a fish. Or it could be. That's a little off to the port. We can uh, do a quick what zoom. Here. Yeah, snap zoom. I think it's something that was left behind. It's trash, maybe. I think maybe trash. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it looks like garbage or. Yeah. It's just shaped funny. Yeah. So uh, they've made a little home out of it. Looks like, yeah, it looks like garbage bag. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Thanks. Sure. You can see other organisms taking advantage mm-hmm. of something hard and in a seamless, mm-hmm. almost desert looking yep. area. Uh, this is what most of the bottom of the ocean looks like. At least from what we know so far, which isn't much. Any other questions, Jim? Yes, we do have a question. I'll, I'll, I'll relay it to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we, did, we had a question about, we, we asked if uh, the, the fish were camera shy. We had a question about any uh, animals uh, ever getting aggressive. Uh, towards the ROV. Has that ever happened? Uh, yesterday we were watching a little bit of footage where the squid seemed to want to be near our lights. Um, I saw it in the secondary camera, um, and then there's we have pictures of it um, on the highlight reel in our in our system here, I mm-hmm. saw. But I, I think that's a question for the ROV. Have you guys ever had aggression from, from animals underwater? Yeah, in the Gulf of Mexico uh, a few years ago, uh, we had a three or four foot long uh, squid <laughs> come up and uh, do the same kind of thing, come at our lights, mm-hmm. and uh, actually held on to the ROV for uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And nice. We eventually shook it free, and then it came around to the front of the ROV and <laughs> hung on again. It was uh, in the middle of the water column on descent. Um, but yeah, they seemed to be drawn in by the lights, and then that one was particularly aggressive and a little scary. Yeah. Big squid coming at you. <laughs> to say the least. I wonder what it must be like if you're in a person in one of those vehicles going down and you have a giant squid come at you. I think it, I think the the Jonathan Sea Link has experienced a couple of those. I think John was in the sub once Can't in think it. Of anything else. I think it was a swordfish or something. Stephanie? Yeah. yeah. I thought you were, you were in the submersible oh, when we got attacked by a swordfish. Oh, yeah. I don't think I was. I don't think it was me. I know that uh, 
I know Gabby was in it when one got stuck next to her window and flopped in there for like a good half hour. But I don't think I don't think I was in the submersible when you. I wasn't in the bubble. Um, no. Maybe I was in the back. Uh, our submersible has been attacked out. by eight to ten the, foot swordfish. Yeah. <laughs> not in the street right lower, uh, Especially <laughs> down here on Port the, Hollis Terrace. Mm-hmm. Our Hollis stuff's a little theater. better. So hopefully we'll start and to see so it. And so there's a lot of swordfish down there. And we saw one time, I was in the sub in the bubble in the front. And I saw this swordfish right at the edge of the field of view. Like 50 feet out. And all of a sudden he turned and started charging. Like he was aiming toward my belly button. <laughs> oh, <laughs> The sphere in the bubble, and the whole sub just shook. <laughs> and then his spear slid down and got stuck oh. between the bubble and, and the battery pod. <laughs> and he was flopping around, and then he broke off his sword oh. and swam away. And surely had one also. I think the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I know we had a Greenland shark lumber into the spear once as well. Don't know if that could be considered aggression. Another question. <laughs> I don't think so. I can't hear. Okay, we can. Oh, so. I don't know. Not quite picking it up yet, huh? So Kim and Kim and Stephanie, uh, or anyone else on the on the ship, is it about a six month uh, period at sea in a calendar year, or are, 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 is the ship uh, out uh, more or less than that? I don't know, Mike. Can you hear? Did you get hear the, that question? Yeah. So the sweet spot for the ship is anywhere between about 180 to 200 days at sea a year. Um, that's often over the course of a full calendar year. Typically, while we've been in the Atlantic here, our season starts somewhere in late March and in yeah, April, maybe. and run until about November. Um, we do have mandatory days in port for things like crew rest, and of course, we also work around uh, longer-term uh, winter repair periods as well as dry dock periods. Um, when we were working in the Pacific, uh, it was a little different since you know it was summer all year round there, and so our repair periods could be. Um, staggered a little bit. Uh, they also have a mid-season repair period, so we'll have a couple yeah, of weeks off sometimes in, in, in August or September around the end of the fiscal year. Um, so about 180 days at sea, or at, at sea a year is, is typical of the Okeanos Explorer. Um, that's uh, usually on average uh, quite a bit more than other uh, NOAA ships in the fleet. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, another question coming up. Zero 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 degrees. Just a question about the uh, uh, Deep Discoverer's uh, specs. How deep can you dive? Oh, does the ROV team want to take over that question? Go for it, Sean. What are the specs of the ROV? How deep can it dive? So our D2 is rated to 6,000 meters. Um, So, yeah, that's our operating limit. Great, How thanks. close to that limit have you guys gotten? All the way. <laughs> We've taken it to 6,000. Is that more of a test? Uh, acceptance test, yeah. In the Puerto Rican Trench. What would you say, Jim? Uh, Shirley was waving her hand saying, that was me on the deepest. <laughs> Uh, near Challenger Deep. There were several dots. Wow. Any other questions from I have our one. audience? John has a question. What happens if you go over that? Or is that the length of the cable? Uh, they're limited by cable and and by specs, correct? The water bottle. Uh, our cable's plenty long enough to get to 6,000, but... Okay. Uh, we will not know the answer to that question because we will never go deeper than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the ROV is limited to that. I mean, this is quite a hefty piece of machinery that takes a lot of engineering power and to build and funding. So I don't think we want to play with that line there. <laughs>
that's probably advisable. So how much how much of the sea can't you reach? Uh, what how much oh uh, lies below that six thousand meter depth? I don't oh, even know what probably a lot. <laughs> I mean, for one, there's a Marianas Trench that goes mm -hmm. to 11,000 meters. It, it's actually a very um, small amount, believe it or, or not, because even though you do have, you know, like the Marianas Trench, the Aleutian Trench, uh, Puerto Rican Trench, um, those are, you know, relatively speaking, very small pieces of the ocean. So I, I, I believe the last spec I heard was somewhere around, it's, it's close to only about 10% we can't reach. What? Sorry. <laughs> I'm surprised by that fact, too. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like we're starting at 40 meters out. Yeah, got something out there. Can, uh... How much left in the transit? Um, we're just about coming up on it. So the ROV is talking, um, the pilots are talking very well to the navigators um, up on the bridge so that they don't want to come up on this other feature very quickly because it can impact how fast or slow the ship can stop and, and as well as the ROV. So they're just making okay. sure that they're taking caution as we approach this next yeah. one to make sure there's no yeah. extreme running into it. Although I think I see a sea star Good there. Enough. Can we yeah, get south? a quick snap stop. zoom if possible. Um, how much longer? I want to snap. How much longer before you think we hit this mound, roughly, Nav? I don't know. If we're, uh, well, actually, we're picking it up in sonar right now. Oh, if you okay. look at the D2 center. So we're going to head, uh, head that way now. It's about 40 meters out. For, okay, oh, so okay. we'll be there shortly. Thank you. All right, Nav, let's get a, another move in. Um, what do you think, Sean? Three... Three zero. What is um, that? Land back up on it. Nav bridge. Is that another squid? Like I don't know what that is. That looks like a squid. Sounds good. Yeah. Kind of um, dusting up some of the stuff. Oh yeah, too. that's a squid. A good spot. Looks like there's a. Yeah, that sounds good. Another burrow here next to it. Three three zero. Yeah, so a lot of these yeah. burrows. There's three, two, actually five. a lot Sorry. of um, three, two, five. biology and fauna that lives in this area, even though it looks quite barren. But a lot of them are burrowing creatures, and they use. Go ahead, um, the sediments here, they create a whole tunnel network similar to what you see in like if you've ever had like a little ant farm or anything growing up, they create this whole tunnel intricate network system two underneath the, three, two, the five, substrate three, here in the sand, um, usually to for protection or to escape other predators or even also looking for food. So a lot of that is based off the different crustaceans that we see, the shrimp, the lobsters, and as well even some fish um, actually burrow. So those little piles that you see. Um, like little dimples out on the seafloor are a response to that kind of bioturbation is what we call it when the biology actually stirs up um, that sediments and all that tunnel when they're digging the tunnels all that sediment goes somewhere so it creates these little piles usually right next to the entrances or the exits of these tunnel systems right, lined up. we should see this feature right. looming in the distance shortly yep we're coming see it on the radar pretty, pretty close yeah. It might be like the last one we come up just all of a sudden up on this wall. <laughs> no, that was crazy. We're going to come up a little in the water column. Kathy, how far? ROV. Eyes on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I see something out there. Ooh. I'll hold yep. off here. Here it comes. Here comes the second mound. It's like a sharp 90 degree wall in front of us maybe which is similar to that first feature that mm -hmm. we saw so this could confirm possibly my theory which was your theory that these are large boulders that have kind of caved off of that wall that we're heading towards that it's a it's what's called an escarpment feature and uh, that these large boulders must have gotten um, loose at some point kind of like a have you ever seen a a calving grit glacier where huge chunks sometimes get loose and fall down. Right. Um, this is kind of what can similarly happen in geology as well where you have these large escarpment walls. Erosion still happens and over time when the rock kind of gets weaker it creates this kind of sheer momentum slices off a huge portion of this and these rocks come tumbling down and can settle. Then once even from a few meters away to several kilometers down that slope so I'm wondering if this is the same thing, because we don't usually have these giant 
boulder masses in the middle of the barren for nothing. These are big enough to be picked up on like, um, what's that called? One of the earthquake sensors? You think seismic? Be. Seismic? You think they're big enough to be called seismic uh, activity? Just a little bit uh, no, the not the ones that we would feel. Okay. Not for sure. No. Yeah. Um, but nope. what's, ooh, another isopod. <laughs> Bye, buddy. They're so ugly, it's cute. <laughs> The first time I was, to see I, was if there was an offset. I was in Dr. Messing's uh, invertebrate zoology class, and he had one in a jar, and it was like big. <laughs> and he'd pick it up on the side and go, "Luke, I am your father." <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah. So, Scott, we're we're going to sign off and let you guys set up for uh, for, for for the rest of the dive. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and we'll be we'll be enjoying it our at our end. Awesome. Absolutely. Uh, before you go, guys, um, you can follow our you can follow our social media. Hang up. There you go. So you. Yeah, just looks like that, uh, we haven't signed off yet because I want to know what that is behind the. Uh, ice. It's a crinoid. I don't know. It's a crinoid. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. You get a better Bye, shot guys. of this video. Bye. Bye. Yeah, let's do it. So, um, if. Uh, Oh, if Harbor there. Branch's MOA yeah, class wants to follow us on social media, okay. you yeah, can break, find break. us on Facebook right. at Ocean Exploration Research or okay. at Ocean Exploration okay, we'll Research Education uh, or on Twitter show. at Ocean Explorer and you can use the hashtag Okeanos or on Instagram at NOAA Ocean Exploration and you can okay, follow video. me on uh, Twitter at Deep Sea Nerdy. Or on Instagram and Facebook off. at Deep Sea yeah. Nerd, Sorry, or you can follow Kim gonna, at Deep Sea Kim on Instagram. Just nice and easy. Um, feel free to ask us questions if you have any more questions um, after you're done um, your class and can't reach us through the chat room anymore. Uh, we're here till uh, tomorrow late afternoon, four o'clock is going to be the end of this cruise. So, um, but you can keep following us. We still post fun stuff. So this is Bathonomus gigantius. Okay. <laughs> Looks and it's sifting through the, the bottom water. And Mike Vecchione had an interesting comment in okay, regards to in the isopod more. that we saw yeah. eating yeah. the fish the fish head that mm -hmm. we saw earlier. It's actually likely that that fish was originally eaten by squid up in the water column somewhere, and that they bite. The, they end up dropping the heads, which end up falling to the seafloor, mm -hmm. because squids are usually sloppy feeders, and um, sometimes this, I guess, the fish head is not as um, malleable as the rest of the fish body, is yeah. like chunky with flesh, so that they end up dropping them. It's not worth trying to get some of the meatier bits in right. the head with, mm -hmm. because their beaks are so limited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they like us today. Why must you do that? Oops. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I think it bumped into us. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's yeah, he's out. Yep. Might be a squid isopod showdown happening. Mm. Uh, no, it's not. False Are alarm. Cutthroat eels, <laughs> maybe? I think Sirius is just starting to see the start of it. Okay, Ooh, visually. Ooh, we so have visual. Yeah, yeah, there's a nice out. wall in front All of right. us. Well, I'll come over and Oops. try to characterize here. Yeah, we should be able to reach it though. And we are at the base here at 12, 1,203 meters below the seafloor. And, and I think that's a sea cucumber at the base right. that just came out of frame Roger. there. I missed it. Well, it's just a little thing. So as we scale up this feature, we're going to do it at a semi-hyper speed okay. <laughs> um, due to the fact that we just want to get an overall look at the biology and the overall geology of this feature before we head yeah. over to that wall because it would be really interesting to see if we could kind of like a puzzle almost place maybe these boulder features back onto the wall and see if that's really where they originated from. Sure I can't imagine anywhere else anything. they would yeah. really come from, Delta but now, only God is. knows and... Okay. As my boss likes to say, she won't tell us. <laughs> well, actually, we're just going to come straight up where we are just to make sure there's no overhangs or anything. Sure. Get a good visual, and then uh, we'll come back down and scale up. 
Sounds good. It's a really nice overview here. And this dark rock here is actually calcium carbonate. It's a limestone that has since been encrusted by what um, seems to either be a phosphatic encrusting or a ferromanganese encrusting. Now, they look the same out here, but if you go, if we were to take a sample and go do some analyses, we could definitely figure out what exactly elemental composition is comprising that encrusting features. But it's all of this limestone. Which, living in here. Florida, you guys should know, um, yeah, I got about the class at, at Harbor Branch, really like um, the, most okay. of the southern Florida area is actually comprised of limestone. That's what Dang. you're living on. And it's why we have some of the best aquifers yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. Beautiful nice. systems down there that fresh water travels through because limestone is highly porous. It has a lot of those big holes and it almost looks like the Swiss cheese of rocks it's <laughs> usually described as. I'm just going to get an overview. And it's cool. I can see, like, the layers here. here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then some of that Swiss cheese, those porous holes, even comprise are down here. So right now we're not getting a great visual on them because the encrusting has since closed up some of those holes on the outer layer of the limestone. But um, on the other mound that we – or the other feature that we saw – we definitely had some of those large structures still, and that's where water was still possibly going in and then also eroding or dissoluting some of these sediments and then causing overall the, the erosional processes that we were seeing there. Do you guys know how tall this was when we were up there, roughly? About 30 meters. 30 meters tall. Okay, we're back beautiful. down to the base here. And there's some more Gorgonians. And you can see a little bit of that overhang from that encrusting material, that whitish material underneath it that looks like part of yeah, um, the actual, what the rock is composed good, of. Yeah. It's very white, which tells me that it's probably been somewhat altered. And we usually refer to that as diagenetically altered, which means that some form of diagenesis either different chemical compositions in the seawater is affecting the calcium carbonate or yeah, some other influence that is coming that in there patch. and disrupting it. Floating. Can you guys look at 9 o'clock? There's this little ball floating around. Good spot. It might Andy. be it. right at the whitish portion. <laughs> yeah, there. so he's floating. Yeah. We'll go check out floating object. I don't know what that is. I'm going to guess it's a ponophore. Okay, come on in. Maybe a jellyfish or something? So there. Huh, it looks like a jellyfish, but I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's one of those, um, it is a tinafore. I mean, uh, not a tinafore, I'm sorry, an adaria. They call it like a sea daisy or something. Yeah. Nice, is it attached nice to the substrate? Yes, yeah, so it's got these little strings. <laughs> a dandelion type one of them. Yeah. And it's got a little air bubble in it to keep it floating. Okay, I'm... Down. It's these tethers. <laughs> sea daisy really or a sea flower? I forget the I forget the common name. Video uh, called it a dandelion. Dandelion, that's it. I can't take credit for that. <laughs> it's a type of it's a type of siphonophore. So right. a sea okay, dandelion. Yeah. It's kind of mobile. Maybe we'll. Yeah, I think if we go in, we're just gonna lose it. Yeah. That's doesn't. Cool. Seems like that's me blowing it around. So I'm not really doing much. Yes, yeah, so it's got these little yeah. sticky tendrils right there. It's and kind of uh, the way the tentacles going, that it so. attaches to the floor and it kind of hangs out. Floats there. Cool this is that. also a great view of that limestone that I was talking about. Very holy. Yeah, it um, is pockmarked, right? Porous. Mm -hmm. And that's that Swiss cheese looking Kay. kind of material. Looks okay. almost chalky, which is what a lot yeah, of please, calcium carbonate ends up turning into oh, if yeah, you give it, uh, you know, a few million years. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it can, due to different pressure changes and how it gets evolved with the tectonics of the earth and the crust, um, we can end up getting this chalky material, which a lot of it in the okay. initial... Yeah. Um, hour or so. When chalk was first used, it was actually mined from a lot of these places where it's calcium carbonates, a bunch of those crushed up skeletons that have been altered over time to be such a fine powder that it was chalk. Now chalk is synthetically produced. 
I don't know if anyone still uses chalkboards. Now it's all Expo markers and whiteboards, but chalk originally came from calcium carbonate. These look really thin, like I could just hardly so touch that rock over there at Peel it off. It could just be break. more than that. I don't know. You don't know. Maybe. That. Now these are off looks a little. Like a layer cake. Mm -hmm. Watch, watch, see, pilot. Yep. Hey, uh, Nav was just uh, letting me know. I think he's got a good point. If, if we have any shot of getting to that wall, uh, we should probably just do a quick survey of this, and then come up and over and head over there. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you'd want to spend more time at the second mound here. No, actually, that sounds like a great plan. Okay. Just get an overview and hop right over. Roger that. So we'll just keep coming up, and uh, when we're at the top, we'll get into tow configuration and head on over there. Sounds good. Thank you. Sure. Have a bit of this slab where it looks like um, a coral framework, an intact framework system was developed underneath it but has since died off and now other organisms are colonizing it such as that more fan-like coral. Mm -hmm. That's just coming out of frame now. You can tell these large chunks are probably being eroded off the, the sides of this boulder and mound whereas uh, that encrusted area is highly um, resistant <laughs> against erosion, but the underlying limestone really isn't. It's really susceptible that it can be eroded and altered, so the water is still penetrating through the crust here into the overall limestone and can dissolve it and in turn then weaken it, which then that more... Um, stable encrusted portions of the limestone uh, create are almost too heavy for that underlying limestone to grab still onto and it ends up sliding down and breaking off in chunks and uh, sliding down the slope of this feature. Come on in here video. What is that? Yeah. Oh, what is this? It looks like a hydroid. What would you say, Steph? Uh, no, I think that's probably a, a black coral. Oh, black coral, yeah. yeah. Black coral. It could be that kind. I don't know. Want to come in a hey, little Hey, did more? somebody just yeah. call in? Yes, Chris and Shirley are here at the ECC. Hi, Center. ladies. Hi. It's much quieter Hello. now. <laughs> did your class leave? Yes. <laughs> okay. They, they just left. Okay. Very excited and very yeah. curious yeah, about it. Yeah, was really excited. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, good, good, good one. The class, thank you. Just gonna keep coming up. Oh, yep. Tina said that this coral looks like parantipathies. Parantipathies. Thank you, Tina. Are you tuning up. in from Russia again? Mm -hmm. I hope so. Or she flew over here, maybe, <laughs> or flew somewhere else. Past day. That was a lot of traveling. A lot of traveling. It, here we go. We got um, some sea fans, some more gorgonians, chrysogorgids, that purple. Um, Anemone. There's a sea star barely hanging on. Oh, yeah. This is dangling on there. Save yourselves. Can maybe get an underlying look of him. wonder what he's dangling off of. Is he attached to the substrate? It looks like he's attached to something else that's wafting. Try to get a snap zoom there. Yeah. Is his stomach out? I think so. I think seeing? he was maybe trying to eat the coral and then got pushed off. Uh-oh. Let's get him to turn around in the cliffhanger situation. <laughs> Ooh. I'm trying to come back over there. It's a little bit difficult. It does look like his stomach is extruded. Mm -hmm. He's still he's hanging on. He's eating. Yeah. He took a risk. Somewhat of an award a uh, reward. Oh my gosh. So his stomach is hanging out. Wow. <laughs> it's eating, it's eating externally. Closer, yeah. Yeah. Hey, is this Chris Ma? Haha. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Inevitably. <laughs> um, so, um, what you are watching is, first and foremost, uh, it is feeding. This is something yeah, that is not some. You know, it's not just incidental. Yeah, uh, you've right got there. a really nice view yeah, there slope, of uh, the um, the stomach extended, and it's probably feeding on whatever that stock is. 
um, you'd be surprised at just how tenacious these animals are when they're feeding. Um, and, uh, in fact, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I can tell what it is that it's eating. Gorgonian? Um, but I think it, it yeah, I mean, I, I, it looks like it. We don't have a ton of time. Here, um, this looks yeah. like it is Circeaster okay. americanus, uh, and that's a goniastrid, another one of these cookie stars. Uh, there are perhaps one or two different species of goniastrids that are uh, known okay. throughout okay. all of the, the cruises that we've seen that, that are kind of voracious predators of cnidarians of octocorals in particular. Um, so in the Pacific and in the Atlantic, uh, they both tend to be Evoplosoma and uh, Circeaster. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so this one, uh, Circeaster in the other, in the Pacific, uh, feeds on a variety of different octocorals. Um, uh, but uh, like Evoplosoma is seen pr primarily on bamboo or uh, bamboo corals, I sit it. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that one was definitely a, uh, a lovely um, shot of that one with its stomach just fully extended. Uh, I mean, just, you I mean, people often see these and they're perched on these corals and they're like, well, what are they doing on there? And I'll say feeding and they're like, well, approve it. And I'm like, well, what else would they be doing? <laughs> In this case, there's no longer, uh, you know, uh, there's no longer a need for anyone to challenge me on this interpretation. And every time I see the, and I, I, you know, for the papers that I write, I analyze a lot of these images, and they're almost always feeding. So, you know, it's almost like I, I almost see them don't, other than the movement, there's almost nothing else that I see sea stars doing. So yeah. uh, occasionally you have behavioral interaction. Uh, so, um, you know, so thank you for that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and as you noticed, it was tenaciously hanging, off, hanging on to the current. Yep. That's also one of the things that goni asteroids are seen doing is climbing on these insanely acrobatic sort of what seem to be very, you know, fine and delicate corals and then, then balancing on, on sort of the tops of them. And bear in mind, this is all like in the water, so, you know, they're they're not that heavy, as, yeah. you know, even as, in spite of, you know, the size and overall bulk, of, you know, they're, they're surprising. I mean, they're all also mostly supported by water pressure, so... And then the tube feed and the, uh, the attachment with the mm -hmm. stomach suggests that they're uh, adhered quite, yeah, quite securely. Fine. So anyway, thanks for stopping. Um, I'm glad uh, we caught that because nothing makes me happier than watching Circe Aster uh, feed. I should mention, too, <laughs> Scott uh, had a really interesting observation uh, that he let me publish a few years ago about that species feeding on Paragorgia. And there was a Paragorgia colony that got knocked down. And they uh, they passed it uh, one year, video, and they went back a year later and saw what could conceivably have been the same individual what? feeding on it um, almost almost a year later. That's craziness. So, um, they take their time. <laughs> you take more That's if good. you want. Well, savoring the, the, the big <laughs> oh, nice win, I guess. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, well, there, well, there's certainly a lot of food there, but there's also just the... Sea stars don't move in our time frame. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, you have a jellyfish. So yeah. I'll just get back to it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 Okay. Yeah, we can oh, let this is a go. cool jelly. Bring almost looks like there's a sea star in it, but that's oh, probably right. his guts. Okay, yeah. well, actually, we're going to uh, stow our swing arms and get into toe configuration okay. here. Sounds and, uh, good. That way we can get over there a little bit quicker. So right, I so guess you're just about there, Sean. I can just come around, huh? And another uh, yeah, observation to make here at the top, um, it looked more mounded um, mm -hmm. yeah. than the other one. The other one, yeah, when we reached the top, it had, like, still got a crust uh, coming up past the surface of the sediment. So it looked like almost like a crown okay, coming thanks. all along the edges of this system, where this uh, one looks like a lot yeah, of that... Start coming up. Um, that. Limestone has been eroded sure at the top, clear. and it looks almost more mound-like. Mm -hmm. And the crustings you can still see are surrounding the area, making those for those really steep slopes, like, like I, I don't know, a flat line, 180 degrees almost. almost. In the water um, but it looks 
like we're not seeing that same feature that we are before. So I'm wondering if this was just a different kind of erosional process. Maybe we're not totally at the peak yet. Um, I mean, it's still erosional processing, but the 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 breakoffs from the the encrusting material happened probably a lot quicker mm -hmm. than at the other one, where it was more the the encrusted material was more coalesced together, mm -hmm. and the sediments actually ended up eroding. Whereas here, it looked like you mentioned earlier; these almost looked like sheets of encrusted so material right. on them, up. which probably yeah. meant they were more susceptible to falling down and breaking mm -hmm. after the erosion happened in this area. So that could have been also a reason why, but really interesting feature to look at. So we have a question from Twitter. Laura Sci-Fi Moon Pie Marmalade. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you can really make any name on these things. At La La Marmalady on Twitter says, Hi, I'm very interested to know how all of these ocean animals are able to survive at such great depths with so much pressure on them. So essentially... Um, Evolution. Yeah, they evolve <laughs> down here. So the pressure, the way pressure works in the deep sea... Water doesn't really respond to pressure the same way that, like, an air pocket does. For instance, your lung. Um, so uh, one atmosphere of pressure, which is uh, the pressure of the atmosphere above you in, at, the, at sea level, right, is 14 like pounds per square inch, maybe. or one ATM, one atmosphere. Uh, Every 10 meters yet. you go underwater, that... Uh, you get another atmosphere. So Come 10 meters underwater, Sean, underwater you're at two atmospheres. 11, we, 15, or uh, let's see, 14 actually, times two, uh, 28 pounds per square inch, like roughly. Meters, um, we are right now at 1,210 yeah. meters. So to calculate that, I would get 17,545 pounds yeah. per square inch of pressure where we're at right now. So it's an insane amount of pressure. The difference between go. us diving to that deep and a fish that lives at depth is that our lungs cannot handle that. So our lungs are pressurized for surface, right? right. So one so atmosphere of pressure in my 40. lungs and in my bloodstream and okay. in the system that I have a depth in a versus a fish who evolved Nothing over millions of years in the deep sea. You got me on uh, they, their bodies are mostly made of water. Good, um, yeah. Some of them have swim bladders, which Absolutely. would be a small pocket of air, in which they use to regulate their... Um, they're buoyancy, but a lot of these deep sea fish actually like have a, oil instead of air in their starboard. bladder. So uh, when you bring them off the bottom, they, off they don't expand or explode. Yeah, but if you were to bring a fish that has an air yeah, pocket swim bladder that. off the bottom, it would expand, right? Because you're reducing the pressure around the air quicker. bladder. Like taking a balloon to the bottom of the ocean, blowing it up, and then releasing it would explode on its way up. So it's just that for the most part, these animals do not have air inside their bodies, unlike a human being Just with a pair of lungs. The so they're not affected the same way we would be if you were to take an air pocket, i.e. a lung, to the depths. So I actually found a really good article on um, scienceabc.com that talks about this. I'm going to uh, put it on your Twitter feed. Um, and it talks about the science of pressure at depth down, just a touch. and yeah, how some of these marine easier. mammals are actually have uh, been yeah, able actually, to adapt yeah, to this because they dive down pretty far to eat. So a lot of the cetaceans or the dolphins and the whales um, can dive up to 10,000 feet underwater. But they do this um, with some ad ad adaptations that have, they've evolved over, you know, millions yeah. of years. Uh, the lungs of these creatures are, comp are completely compressible, meaning they can force all the gases out of their lungs and into their bloodstream okay. and muscles, which can ahead. essentially dissolve Sounds under good. pressure. These organs down. have adapted to hold more myoglobin, or oxygen-storing protein, in muscles Chris, than hemoglobin. Uh, and hemoglobin. So uh, I'll post this for you. You can read a little more about it. But that basically sums uh, it up. It's because they do not really have air I pockets chose to come the same way we do. The port. Because I hope that answers your question. The port. So just to keep it out that way, totally. Um, we'll just remember when we get to the site, I'll come back around the port to come under. So that was the whole mi mindset there. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Get them get back to zero. And have you good and tighten. Yeah, so we're on our oh, way to great. the wall Thanks now. Uh, it'll be a few yeah. minutes. 
before we get Push there. So in the meantime, enjoy the blue water. And uh, I locked in auto depth at 11.55. So we know the Delta should stay around there. Sean came up a few meters. Um, and that just kind of eliminates that variable we're coming under. Uh, and I'll put in auto head too. So he has auto head in, I have auto head in. We know the tether looks okay. I'm just pushing out. Um, and once I know I'm behind Sirius, which sometimes you can see in high pack pretty well. Yeah, Absolutely. I'll uh, I'll start to come up. Let's take out a lot of depth. Probably maybe off to one side a little. But I can see in my tether. Uh, Look at there, the Titan. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I like that method. Works pretty well. Even the tether comes out really well. Yeah. I was thinking about uh, maybe we should put like battery operated LEDs on the tether. Could sneak them in the footballs. Yeah. Housing. Okay, there I am in your tether cam. Yeah, That's good. the best camera for it. It's going to take out auto heading at this time. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and take it out? I'll go ahead and take it out. I'll keep a little bit of just a touch of forward way in. Copy that. And uh, maybe you maybe just let Bridge know what we're doing because um, we're not. I wouldn't call it off bottom, but you can just let them know we're into formation for the next move. Go ahead, Nev. All right, yeah, that's understood. Just let me know when you're ready for that move. I think, uh, I think we're... Pretty much there. What do you think, Sean? Are you good? Yeah, I think we're set. Yeah, let's get a move. Maybe, um. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do 380, something like that. Um, and we'll keep an eye on Sean's sonar. Um, 50 now, range it to 80. Yeah. I think so. I, I'd say um, just tell the bridge we, if we could, we'd like to make it up to 0.5. Um, they're they're just going to use the screws to get over there. Doesn't look like there's anyone. Um, no. I know they'll be fighting the current, but uh, you can tell them we we'll eventually want 0.5, but maybe just start at 0.3. Go ahead now. All right, two eight zero meters bearing two nine zero degrees, speed decimal five knots. Uh, yeah, we should be able to make decimal five just fine. That's, um, you know, not at too bad of an angle from uh, what we're already facing. Uh, it might take us, you know, a minute or so to, to get up to that speed, but that should work out. Yeah, roger that. Range three eight zero. Bearing Cop. 290. Yeah, good copy. Thank you, Bridge. I'm definitely getting blown into you right now. Getting blown into Sirius? Yeah, so that. It's weird. I'm trying to think. I thought the current was going. Yeah. That way. So if you're just joining us, um, we are 40 miles off the coast of Key West, um, off the Portalis Terrace. 
Uh, we yeah, started this dive at 1,210 meters underwater. We should hit about 1,100 meters at the end of the dive after we travel up the escarpment here. Um, we were on two um, mound features at the base of this escarpment, but we've decided to pick up and go as quickly as possible over to the escarpment so we can see what that's made out of before, um, before the end of the dive. Um, here's a shout out to Wrigley Marine Science Center. Um, stop procrastinating nice, and like get to your own research, <laughs> guys. <laughs> That's what they said. They we're from Wrigley Marine Science Center watching to procrastinate our own research. Hey, we need you working. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> you can have us hanging out in the background. Probably. I may That's or may what I not do. have done that <laughs> throughout <laughs> my degree. Yeah, I do yeah, it all the time. Pretty cool. <laughs> like, Put Okeanos on in the background hey, and just peek over in between. <laughs> Some cool pops up. Really, really well. um, um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Mount good. Vernon High School in Mount Vernon, Keep New York, Miss Miss Maureen Flynn's Earth yeah, Science okay, class. Uh, so big hi from the Okeanos Explorer. We hope you're enjoying the dives. Um, we hope you get to watch them all the time. Um, I hear you're doing a lab on sedimentary rocks this afternoon. Woo -woo. So that will make our geologist Kim very happy. Uh, we should be seeing well, quite a few of those soon. Shall do you want to fly? When we get back down to the bottom, sorry, we're up in the middle of the water column during your class. We'll get back down shortly. Yeah, we're trying to make sure we can head to that other escarpment um, feature. So rather quickly, we want to make sure that we can get to it and potentially see differences maybe in the geology as well as biology in the area. Yeah, so we should be back down before your class is over. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, hi from the Okeanos, from the middle of the ocean. And Hello. 1,200 feet underwater. Um, so have a good day. Have a fun class. Oh, and you can follow us on social media. So we have a Facebook page at Ocean Exploration Research and at Ocean Exploration Research Education. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at Ocean Explorer and use the hashtag Okeanos or on Instagram at NOAA Ocean Exploration. Or you can follow me. I'm Stephanie Farrington. I work for Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute, Florida Atlantic University. I'm the biological science co-lead on this cruise. And you can follow me on Twitter at Deep Sea Nerdy or Instagram and Facebook at Deep Sea Nerd or Kim, who's our our resident geologist. She's the geological science co-lead on this expedition. She's from Rasmus, or University of Miami, um, getting her PhD next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, and you can, you can uh, yeah. follow her on Instagram at Deep Sea Kim. So if you have any questions for us, feel free to use the hashtag Okeanos on Twitter, and we'll answer them if we can. And make sure you mention that you're from Miss Flynn's Earth Science class. spot. I like that little box for the craft. It's nice. Yeah. Version 2.0. Like Kinison 3000. Oh, yeah. Good. Did you mimic the angle on the joy boxes? Or did, was it just by feel? Roger. Copy. Yeah, it's probably a good call.
Watch later. I heard you guys talking about uh, mammals going very deep. Yes. Um, I just learned about how deep elephant seals go, and it kind of blew my mind. How deep do they go? I forgot the exact number, but uh, <laughs> if you look it up, they're like one of the deepest diving mammals. I will look it up. Four thousand nine hundred twenty-one feet, and stay underwater for two whole hours. That's crazy. Probably, they probably do that for food. Let me look. I'll, I'll keep researching. For fun. Hold. Yeah, it's crazy, right? And they're. Yeah, that's true. I just always think about them on the beach, not, not going out to 4,000 feet. Yeah. <laughs> that would be. All right, I'm going to increase. I've been in auto depth. Um, I'm going to hold it there, but I'm going to pick up a little. I think you're, once you started moving, you came up a little in the water column. Would you stream out? Yeah. Increased. Yeah. Actually, do you want to maybe force that to port a little. I just, I don't want it to get, uh, I don't want it to start towing backwards, you know. Eventually, uh, I think it would sort, sort itself out, but. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Yeah, so they dive really deep to forage for food. And they'll also migrate in search of it, too. Interesting. Yeah. So they can grow, I just read it, something crazy, 20 feet long and 8,800 pounds. You've got them over there in California, stuff. I know. I've never seen any, though. I've only seen the no. sea lions. And um, the sea lions, the, um, what are the little, they're so cute. The otters, yeah, the wild otters, and um, we went on a whale a whale watching mission. You know, one of those whale watching boats. Yeah. And uh, there's a really cool squid in D2. I don't know what that is. Um, and I got to see a po uh, four or five pods of killer whales. Oh, cool. And um, humpbacks. Man, they're stinky. They smell really bad. <laughs> <laughs> That was cool, though. I have really good photographs if you guys want to look at them later. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking better. Your head's coming around. I've been laddering pretty hard to... Just kind of keep up with that. We just, we didn't want, uh, yeah, because if, and it would have sorted itself out, but um, potentially put another turn in the tether. Or in the 6.8. Sounds good.
So Laura Sci-Fi Moon Pie Marmalade has a second question from her son. <laughs> My son has a question for you too. How many different types of sea life have you seen in all your years that you've been diving? I have no idea. Thousands. Pretty much everything, I think. There's still so much left to discover. That's so. true. Who knows, right? I don't know if we have a percentage of how much. I don't know. Um, I've seen dolphins and whales and um, some marine mammals. Let's see. I've seen plants. Um I sponges and corals we're coming up over here yes. what else that fish yeah i'm curious Worms. too i've forgotten to look something called a bryozoan bryozoan you could bring it up now if you want pretty much you every invertebrate right bio box, right? phylum i can think of echinoderms so sea stars starfish um Sea lilies, yeah. all kinds of stuff. There's so many different kinds of, yep. of um, um, animals down here. A little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Lots of lots of neat stuff to look at. Just a little bit more. Oh yeah, you ranged out to 80. Nice. 